Mr. McKittrick, though, nails this. In 2009, I was asked by a journalist for my thoughts on the importance of Earth Hour. Here's my response. I abhor Earth Hour. Abundant, cheap electricity has been the greatest source of human liberation in the 20th century. Every material social advance in the 20th century depended on the proliferation of inexpensive and reliable electricity. Giving women the freedom to work outside the home dependent on the availability of electrical appliances that free up time. Getting children out of menial labor and into schools dependent on the same thing, as well as the ability to provide safe indoor lighting for reading. Development and provision of modern health care without electricity is absolutely impossible. The expansion of our food supply, the promotion of hygiene and nutrition, depended on being able to irrigate fields, cook and refrigerate foods, and have a steady indoor supply of hot water. Many of the world's poor suffer brutal environmental conditions in their own homes because of the necessity of cooking over indoor fires that burn twigs and dung. This causes local deforestation and the proliferation of smoke and parasite-related lung diseases. Anyone who wants to see local conditions improve in the third world should realize the importance of access to cheap electricity from fossil fuel-based power-generating stations. After all, that's how the West was developed. This whole mentality around Earth Hour demonizes electricity, and I can't do that. Instead, I celebrate it and all that it has provided humanity. Earth Hour celebrates ignorance, poverty, backwardness. By repudiating the greatest engine of liberation, it becomes an hour devoted to anti-humanism. It encourages the sanctimonious gesture of turning off trivial appliances for a trivial amount of time in deference to some ill-defined abstraction called the Earth. And all the while hypocritically retaining the real benefits of continuous, reliable electricity. People who see virtue in doing without electricity ought to just shut off the fridge, the stove, the microwave, the computer, the water heater, the lights and TV, all the other appliances for a month, not an hour, pop down to the cardiac unit to hospital, shut the power off there too. I don't want to go back to nature. Travel to a zone hit by earthquakes, floods, and hurricanes. You see what it's like to go back to nature. For humans, living in nature meant a short lifespan marked by violence, disease, and ignorance. People who work for the end of poverty and relief from disease are fighting against nature. I hope they leave their lights on. Here in Ontario, through the use of pollution control technology and advanced engineering, our air quality has dramatically improved since the 1960s, despite the expansion of industry, the power supply. If, after all this, we're going to take the view that the remaining air emissions outweigh the benefits of electricity and that we ought to be shamed into sitting in darkness for an hour like naughty children who've been caught doing something bad then we are setting up unspoiled nature as an absolute transcendent ideal that obliterates all other ethical and humane obligations. No thanks. I like visiting nature, but I don't want to live there, and I refuse to accept the idea that civilization, with all its trade-offs, is something to be ashamed of.